I am the architect. Picture space and time as a giant invisible graph paper made of the tiniest squares imaginable. Each square is a qubit holding a spinning arrow of light called a quantum state vector. That arrow's tilt and spin tell you two things, the probability of something happening and the energy it carries. The universe draws reality by adding waves of light together on this grid. Just like in school when you multiply two binomials with foil, first, outside, inside, last, you end up with four terms. In quantum information holography, the same thing happens when two waves meet. The first two terms are the self-parts, each wave's own brightness. The other two are the cross-terms, and these are where the magic happens. They are the interference patterns, the places where waves help each other or cancel out. Those patterns shape the geometry of space-time itself. Physicists measure that shape with curvature, which in this language is the Laplacian of the interference pattern, the mathematical way to capture its bends and folds. Those folds are what we feel as gravity. Not every pattern gets printed into reality. There is a threshold, just like in the photoelectric effect, where light needs enough energy to knock an electron free. Here, the light's frequency has to be high enough and its arrow has to be lined up just right with the qubit. If it passes the test, it collapses into the grid, leaving a permanent imprint. If it does not, it stays virtual and unseen. So foil in this context is more than math. The first two terms give you energy and mass. The cross terms give you the shape of space-time. The alignment and frequency decide what becomes real. In normal terms, the universe takes ripples of light, combines them like multiplying two binomials, and the resulting four pieces either stay in possibility or get etched into reality. This is how spinning light becomes the fabric of space, the pull of gravity, and the memory of space and time.